Thank you, Nagaraj, uh, Chairman, sir. Uh, I think we can straight away go to the topic of uh, anterior spine uh, avulsion fracture management. So this is more common in the pediatric age group. And in this group, it is rarely communicated and very rarely associated with ligament injuries. However, in the adults, it seems to be combined more with upper and tibial fractures. The mechanism of injury is generally deceleration, internal rotation, and hyperextension, or it is deceleration, valgus, and internal rotation. However, in children, it's basically a direct blow to the lowermost portion of the femur. And this is a classification that is being followed for the last 50 years, I guess. Uh, type 1 being very little displacement to a greater displacement with an anterior elevation, something like a trapdoor with a posterior hinge. A type 3 is a complete detachment. It is divided into 3A and B. A would be with internal rotation. B would be with external rotation. And then you have the type 4, which is the comminuted one. If you look at the treatment algorithm for this, generally the type 1 uh, is, you know, you've got to conserve it, immobilize in a long knee brace, protect weight bearing, and then with follow-up radiographs, you start mobilizing over a period of four to six weeks. The type 2, which is the trapdoor, also can be reduced. So you have to first attempt a closed reduction. If in case it is successful, you follow what you had done in the type 1. If it is un unsuccessful, then you've got to go to the type 3 management, which is basically going to be an arthroscopic fixation. You have various choices of fixation that we shall see, a compression screw or a suture type of uh, pull-out stitch. And we have the type 4, which is a comminuted. In a comminuted, it is unlikely that you would probably be able to use a compression screw. You would probably have to use some sort of a pull-out stitch. Generally, in short, uh, you know, the after fixation, the whole idea is to allow early mobilization so you do not have uh, stiffness. Once the fracture has healed, the person can eventually go on to sports. So look, let us look at this particular fracture, which is, uh, as you can see, is a type 3 fracture. Uh, this is in a young boy of about 9 years. These are the investigations that you would like to do. You would not only take uh, an x-ray in the uh, lateral position that shows you the type of fracture, but you would to take some CT scan cuts because that tells you associated uh, bony injuries. Now, this particular uh, fracture is preferably treated with a compression screw. It's a single fragment, essentially. So the first step would be to basically clean up the under area, and then you would do a temporary fixation. The temporary fixation would be such that you take out the intermeniscus ligament because that is the one that prevents the reduction, and then transpatellar, you put in a pin in order to have a temporary fixation. Remember that most of the anterior fibers of the ACL are continuous with the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and therefore this particular fracture pattern tends to hinge onto the lateral side. Since it hinges onto the lateral side, it is pertinent that you first fix it on the medial side, because once you fix it on the medial side, you probably would, all that would be required would be that type of fixation. Now you use the C arm so that you know that you do not go through the uh, epiphyseal plate, your angles, etc., should be such that uh, you are not, uh, you are able to go in a oblique fashion and do not skew around the anterior uh, superior surface of the fracture surface. Uh, once you flex and extend, you got to see that that particular fracture, I mean the screw head, does not scuff the articular cartilage uh, of the uh, medial femoral condyle. So. What are the tips that you do? I think you need to take primarily a superomedial and a superolateral accessory portal. Once you take these portals, you've got to introduce, as I said, the medial screw first. And because the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus is continuous with the ACL, you've got to be as close to the center as possible. Because the moment you are a little medial, then you are going to scuff the articular cartilage. You've got to be a little bit more anterior, because if you are a little posterior, you will start uh, causing impingement on the intercondylar notch, giving rise to a fixed flexion deformity. So you got to avoid this type of impingement. So you got to be very sure about where you are going to fix this. We do not use a washer because the, the, the head itself would act as a washer. Generally, the major fragment is what requires the, figment, uh, the fixation. The rest of it falls in place. You've got to countersink the fragment. 
you got to measure the fragment to know how much of that big fragment can be fixed. Only the fragment should be three times the diameter of the screw. Otherwise, it is not possible to fix it with the screw. You may have a little bit of laxity following the fixation. Most importantly, you need to remove the screw at 12 weeks. And uh, this is what we did for this uh, particular young boy. And uh, as you can see, the fracture has healed very well. There is no flexion deformity, full flexion, and this is what you would see at six weeks. So at, uh, sorry, 16 weeks. So this is where we removed the screw. And once you remove the screw, you can see there is no scuffing of the cartilage anywhere. The screw has been placed in such a fashion that uh, you know, it has not caused any impingement on the intercondylar notch or any other sort of damage. So the ACL looks pristine, and it is, this is how you would get a good fixation of this particular fragment. However, in certain situations, you would have to do pull-out stitches. The problem with pull-out stitches is that you tend to put too much tension on the ACL. The moment there is a tension on the ACL, the hamstrings go into a spasm, and therefore, very often, many of these patients land up with a fixed flexion deformity, and also there is a higher chance of arthrofibrosis. However, if it is comminuted, the basic principles, however, remain the same. Oh, already. Yeah, the... Uh, the uh, so what you need to do is uh, basically fresh, freshen up the uh, thing. However, one of the tips that I would suggest when you are doing these pull-out stitch is to take a central portal. So you, when you take a central sort of pull-out, probably somewhere in the center and posterior part, and you take out the stitch through the center, it pushes the anterior portion of the fragment down, use a fiber tape for this mul with multiple loops, and then you can take your regular stitch on either from the base of the uh, ACL going on the medial and on the lateral side, uh, anteromedially and posterolaterally, so that you have the entire fragment down. Once you do in this particular fashion, then you can expect a very good reduction and no fixed flexion deformity. So this is the summary of advantages, which I have already sort of put out. The uh, Screw fixation, there is a direct compression. Remember, you really don't have to go to the posterior cortex. The screw need not be that long because it is perpendicular in to the line of pull of the ACL and therefore it acts like a, a tent peg. And therefore you don't need to really go to the posterior cortex. Uh, suture consideration, as I said, you would probably have to use it in those cases where the epiphysis is not uh, open in an open epiphysis, you'd rather do a screw removal, a screw rather than a pull-out stitch. However, if you look at the literature clinically, the comparative study of screw and suture, there is not much to, uh, no significant difference in terms of their clinical outcome or in terms of stability. The post-op regime is ideally to start early mobilization. So depending upon the type of fixation and the, and the stability that you have achieved, this is what you start doing. Generally, bedside binding starts about three to four weeks. Take care to see that the person does not develop a fixed flexion deformity. So I think the anterior tibial spine fractures can be fixed very well with a cannulated screw system. The results are fairly consistent. You need to take superior medial and lateral accessory portals so that your angles of fixation are proper. It is not necessary to cross the epiphyseal plate. You need, to, need not go through the posterior cortex. You need to remove the screw in 12 weeks. Fibers of the lateral meniscus are continuous with the anterior portion of the ACL and therefore take advantage of that. Prevent an FFD in a pull-out stage by taking a central tunnel through the posterior third base of the fracture fragment. Thank you.